the No Fate Channel checking in. And on this episode of Dad's Bucket List, I am going to be tackling an item that has been on my list for well over eight years, far too long. Today, I'm going to be building a desktop computer from scratch. In 2009, I wanted to build my own desktop computer from scratch, but I ended up talking myself out of it. I had tons of excuses. The main one being that without previous experience in building computers, I was going to ultimately end up with a very expensive and a very heavy paperweight. So I ended up getting the HP that you see behind me. And frankly, it actually performed better than I thought. I never expected to get past the five or six year mark and it handled everything that I needed it to. In 2017, I got into some light video editing and it was clearly obvious that I needed a new computer. But with cryptocurrency mining in full swing, the prices of RAM and GPUs was through the roof. I was still deathly afraid of spending a ton of money on a new computer parts only to end up with a very expensive brick. I decided to bridge the gap between my old computer and my future computer by upgrading my old computer with cheap used parts, but parts that were still going to be uh, an upgrade from what was already in there. So I changed out the GPU, the CPU, and the RAM. I had very good success with adding the hardware, and I saw a big jump and an improvement as with regards to performance. The success of upgrading my old computer made me realize that I could save a ton of money by using old architecture and used components, but still get a huge performance bump when compared to what I had been using. Also, the fact that I didn't break my old computer made me realize that building my own computer was within reach and not something I should be talking myself out of, but rather something I should be talking myself into. With all my excuses finally behind me, I stepped off the cliff and headed straight into the abyss of used and refurbished computer components. Craigslist, eBay, uh, Facebook Marketplace, Newegg, which has a refurbished uh, section, and Amazon Prime, which has a used and refurbished section. Now, I had no idea what the final product was going to look like. I had no expectations. The only starting point I had was the processor. I wanted an FX8350. It is an old processor, but it is extremely fast and is an eight core processor. Even though it has four cores, it acts like an eight core. And because it was old architecture and there was no upgrade path, it was extremely affordable and there's tons of them on the market. Finding a used FX8350 online is easy. There's tons of them out there, but I wanted to get the best deal possible. I still had the fear that I could potentially destroy this computer during the assembly process, so I wanted to keep the cost as low as I could without sacrificing ultimate performance at the end product. I ultimately found a really good deal on Craigslist. It was a package deal. The guy was selling not only the 8350, but an Asus motherboard, a Cooler Master full tower case, 12 gigabytes of RAM, uh, water cooler and a CPU cooler along with a monitor of all things. We agreed upon $225 for the entire package. Now I thought that was an excellent deal considering a used 8350 sells on eBay for $75 to $90. Now I was certainly skeptical. It is Craigslist after all. There's tons of stories of people simply being ripped off, given bad parts that are dead on arrival, or being bait and switched with what they think they're getting and what they actually do get. I was skeptical when I went to go pick up the items. I did what I thought was a thorough investigation and nothing stood out as out of the ordinary. However, when I got the parts home and tried to stand up the case, I realized that it was missing one of the four legs. When I pulled off the rear panel and did a close inspection on a few cables, I noticed that the cables themselves actually looked melted and the bare wire was exposed. Also, the computer case did not come with any hard drive trays, so that was going to make adding a hard drive that much more difficult. The biggest issue I found was with the motherboard. When I closely inspected the motherboard and got my face right up to it and pulled out a flashlight, only then did I realize that the front controller panel was missing a pin. I had no way of knowing how that was going to impact the workings of the front of the case until I assembled the whole computer with parts I still hadn't gotten yet. So clearly I thought this was a great deal 
and shame on me for not spending that much extra time and going over every part and every component of the package with the fine tooth comb. Clearly the seller knew of at least some of these issues and failed to disclose them to me, but with Craigslist, as usual, it's buyer beware. Regardless of my experience with that first Craigslist package, I still dove into the used market to get a number of items. I got a GTX 950 two gigabytes by EVGA for $100, which was a great deal for me. I also got a Windows 10 license for $39. I got an Asus wireless card refurbished for $35. And I got 60 gigabytes, two eight gigabyte sticks of DDR3 RAM for $60. I did end up buying a few items new. The reason being the cost difference between used and new was so small that it made no sense not to get new and get the warranty that came with it. So I got a one terabyte hard drive for $60. I got a 500 gigabyte uh, SSD for $130. And I got a rear facing fan for $6.75. I also had to pick up some miscellaneous items. So I got a fan splitter cable for just under $8. I got Arctic thermal paste for just under $7, and I got Velcro to help me with some cable management for $6. Once I purchased all the parts I needed, I finally had a vision of how the build was gonna come together, and I knew which parts I wasn't gonna need. So, because I was going with air cooling for the CPU, I sold the AIO water cooler for $20. Also, I had five sticks of RAM and only four slots, so I sold a four gigabyte sticks for $20, and those two sales helped defer the total cost of the PC. bent pin for the front controller panel on the motherboard. I didn't know how that was going to impact the front panel. Luckily, when everything was said and done, all it did was make one of the USB 3.0 ports uh, unusable. Thankfully, there's not only another USB 3.0 port on the front panel that does work, but there's a number on the back that work as well. So it's not going to impact the long-term use of the um, computer, and it certainly could have been a lot worse. It's over now, and it was certainly a labor of love, but it took me more than three months to get this computer up and running from the day I decided to put my excuses behind me, step off that ledge, and build a PC from scratch. Most of the time was spent hunting down deals online, haggling over price, and in some cases I had to pick up these parts in random parking lots across Massachusetts. In other cases, I actually had to have parts shipped overseas, which took forever. One of the more frustrating parts was working with Cooler Masters customer service. I kept getting the runaround and their online US site was actually down for maintenance for longer than three weeks. I finally got to someone who was able to help me. I got the case foot that I needed. I got the cables for the front panel as well as um, hard drive trays. And the process took so long and the customer service representative took so much pity on me, they actually sent them to me for free. So I was very thankful of that. Once I had 
all of these parts. I completely disassembled the case, cl cleaned out years worth of dust and grime and reassembled everything, got the windows uploaded, got all my files transferred over and, and voila, it is done. It seems like it was a simple process now that it was done, but it was a ton of work, but I'm glad that I did it. In the end, even though it took so much longer than I ever anticipated, and I was slightly scammed on Craigslist, the joy I had when I hit that power button, the computer booted up to Windows without any issues, made it all worth it. The final cost of the PC was $625. I recouped $40 by sell selling the four gigabyte stick of RAM and the water cooler. So what did I get for $625? We got the FX8350 that I was looking for. We got 24 gigabytes of RAM and we got the GTX 950 graphics card. Also, we've got this massive tower behind us, the Cooler Master Stormtrooper that has four case fans and the ability for tons of extra expansion if I need it. Also, in terms of hard drives, we've got the primary 500 gigabyte SSD and then a backup data storage file of one terabyte regular hard drive. Lastly, I purposely went out of my way to get a really nice Wi-Fi card because even though right now I'm connected directly to my router in my office, there is a potential that I may end up changing my office or have a different location for this computer and will need to get good access to Wi-Fi. So what kind of performance did I get for $625? Like my old computer and the upgraded version of my old computer, I benchmark this using Cinebench, Novabench, and Geekbench. The results were unanimous and clear as day that this new computer is almost twice as fast as the upgraded version of my old computer. With regards to the graphics card, the new GTX 950 was five times faster than the upgraded graphics card I put in the old HP that I had. So definitely much, much faster than what I had been using. Could I have gotten the same benchmark scores if I spent $625 on a pre-built computer, going through like a Best Buy, Walmart, Staples, or even a huge online manufacturer like Hewlett Packard? The truthful answer is I probably could have, but I wouldn't have gotten all the bells and whistles that I have now. Um, those being the SSD and the normal mechanical hard drive as well as all the space that comes with this huge full tower and the potential for expansion. Also, this Asus motherboard has the potential to be overclocked, something that I've never done and always wanted to do, and that may be another bucket list challenge that I, uh, I try to tackle in the future. But I definitely wouldn't have gotten all of these bells and whistles for that $625 price point if I had gone through a big box store. Building my own computer from scratch was frustrating at times. It took way longer than I expected, but it was so rewarding. Um, not only the satisfaction of putting it all together myself and knowing the ins and outs of this computer case, but the learning aspect. I learned so much in doing this, way more than I could have by simply uh, reading uh, articles on computer hardware and watching YouTube videos on uh, computer assembly. I know there are thousands of you out there with way more computer experience than I will ever have. The No Fate channel is all about improving. So please, let me know in the comments below. Where did I go wrong? What mistakes did I make? And what can I do better next time? So now that I've conquered this bucket list, I am on to the next. As usual, thanks for watching, and don't save anything for the trip back. <music>